What is up everyone? JD here. Hope you're doing well today. Today I'm excited to bring you my full review of the Spyderco PM2 Crew Carta Crewware my Carta knife. This one here, Linton, again on the channel. I really do appreciate it, but I did not get permission to use your name. So just leave a shout out down in the comments below. I'll tag you because I do want to show my appreciation for loaning me this knife. Uh, it's been a little while since I've handled a PM2, but what we're going to do is go ahead and go through the knife specs. We're going to do some size comparisons, and then we'll go ahead and jump into thoughts and impressions on the knife. Very weird to have a PM2 back in hand. It's been that long for me. So the PM2 has a 3.44 inch crew wear blade has a 4.82 inch handle micarta on steel liners which you may recognize a little bit different from your typical pm2 overall length coming in at 8.29 inches i just forgot how long the pm2 is with that blade and then claimed weight with the crew wear version if the website is correct is four ounces let's go ahead and check that really quick doesn't feel like a four ounce knife but the balance on these are so good sometimes it's hard to tell so coming in at 3.9, just a little bit lighter than what is advertised on the website. Let me go ahead and do some quick size comparisons for you, just in case you aren't familiar with the PM2, which would surprise me as popular as a knife as this is. We're going to go ahead and start with the Shaman, the knife that replaced my PM2. As you can see here, the Shaman is a more robust blade. And I do have the skinny scales on here, which I do love on Spydercos. I have found that while this hump is comfortable and does provide excellent ergos, I favor that skinny scale, just a little bit more neutral. And I do enjoy and appreciate that. We'll go ahead and bring out the AD 20.5 so you can get a size reference if you have and or more familiar with that knife. You can tell PM2, just definitely a more full size oriented knife, but still a slicer to be had. Let me move these two out of the way and we'll go ahead and bring out the Benchmade bug out just in case you're more familiar with that or have a bug out but not a spider co and then we'll go ahead and bring out the k320 which is made by hogue for sig as you can see here the pm2 is longer than both these knives but not quite as heavy girthy as that aluminum sig more closely in weight to what i would say this titanium scale version of the pm2 which is 2.8 ounces coming in at 3.9 just over an ounce more you can feel it but it's not a huge difference let me move these two out of the way we'll bring out some budget knives here really quick just in case you're on a budget and you like watching these videos but don't own any of these more expensive knives first up we're going to bring out the raccoon as you can see here the raccoon just a little bit smaller overall and then we'll bring out the buck 110 which is going to be a little bit longer. I've done this comparison before, if you can't tell. Let's do some profile so you can see if these linered or full linered micarta scale versions of the PM2 are any thicker than the other knives that are down here. So you can see here it's going to be exactly the same thickness as the Raccoon. So if you like that thickness, this is right up your alley. We'll go ahead and bring the AD 20.5 out here with the flat scales as well. And as you can tell, this one here is much more thinner. And the one that I think everyone's going to probably be more interested in is going to be versus the Shaman. The Shaman is just a tad thicker, but they both have those flat scales. All right, all that out of the way, I really am digging this. So one of the things that I didn't really like about the standard pm2 is going to be the fact that it had the inset liners uh, i just felt like for me the g10 sometimes i felt like i could feel it flexing and these full steel liners with these micarta scales completely takes care of that i ended up upgrading mine to the titanium scales the lotus scales that are contoured and a little bit more robust and that really transformed the knife but i feel like this just feels really good in the hand it feels really good very stable um, just like the shaman for me you have a lot of options for hand and grip position on this knife that are very very comfortable spider coast to me have some of the best ergonomic lines their knives just really felt like they're meant for users people that are going to be holding it a lot want something very comfortable in hand that you know if you have to do multiple re repeated cuts it's not something that is going to be bothersome to you, especially if you're, you know, 
trying to skin a deer or other game um, if you're trying to work out in the field and you got to open a couple of packages back to back to back things like that this is going to be really really good for you the one thing that i criticize on spyderco are the compression locks i really wish all of their compression locks were like the ones that you see on the smock that were attached to a button that allowed you to operate it outside of the scale. To me, I hate this little small pinch area radius on there, which is why I put the CME on my Shaman because I really don't appreciate that. Now, this does have really good action, but ha action, but it does have a little bit of that blade play. It has just a touch more than what I have on my Shaman, but my Shaman isn't quite so fall shut. I didn't want to mess with this knife's action too much because I think the user might have it set up to their preference. So it, you know, it falls shut. Um, the blade's really light, so it takes me a minute to remember how much force to give it without slamming it against the stop pin, which I don't really want to do with someone else's knife. Um, but as with the Shaman, I have a little bit less of that blade play in the pivot, just a hint less, and it. It's a little bit, but some of that is also part of the CME doesn't allow the compression lock to fully close. I need to get in there and sand it down so it can, but you can see I need more force to get it to close. But the nice thing about that is once I do it right, <laughs> it will close and it won't bounce off the stop pin on me. So that's why I have to kind of slow down a with the lighter blade and B this one here having a little bit smoother action. But I wonder if part of that is having these solid steel liners being able to compress that washer down a little bit more i wonder if that has anything to do with that now he did send it to me and he was saying that it does favor the show side a little bit there and i did work on it some but i did notice after i tightened it down it seems to want to move over i don't know if maybe the pivot has backed out on me a little bit as i fidgeted with it or not or if for some reason something's going on with anything that i adjusted as far as the barrels on the knife so i am going to do a disassembly later to try to straighten that out for him i think and i i believe this is what happened on mine as well either the lanyard tube probably needs to be spun around to see if it does have an uneven bevel on where it's opened up here or it could be that one of the holes here with the micarta scales or something are just a little bit uneven from where they drilled it out at the factory. And just by hand taking a little bit, uh, taking a little bit, taking a little drill bit that fits snug and just spinning it by hand a little bit to try to relieve that to see if you can shift this up or down to adjust it. Let me see if I can show you on the camera without shaking it so much. So you see how you can move the blade it could be that one of the spacers is just off slightly and it needs to just shift one way or the other. So I'm going to check all that out and I'll show you in a video because I did that learning on my own with my spider codes. But now that I've done it on a few of them, I don't mind showing you on camera because I think I can move through it quickly enough for it not to be an issue now if you like the size of the pm2 but maybe you don't like the thumb hole or the blade shape i am going to circle back to the shaman because i think that has a little bit of a cleaner shape to it it does have the giant spider hole but i feel like the shaman having the leaf shape um, versus the bird shape here i think is a little bit cleaner and a nice option you're going to pay a little bit more for the shaman though because it is a thicker blade taller blade there's more steel that goes into it um, so it's a little bit more on the expensive side and then adversely i had it out here earlier is going to be the k320 although not quite as long a little bit more of an affordable option if you don't mind the polymer i'm really hoping because og original goat made aluminum scales for all the g10 decas i'm wondering if there's enough people that ask them they might consider making their lightweight aluminum scales for the k320 i think that'd be hugely popular i have the aluminum scale stock version on here but it does add a good deal of weight and i think that could turn some people off if you're really on a budget and you would like a recommendation that's under that hundred dollar mark Something that you can get if you don't mind country of origin being China is going to be the Conspirator. It is a nice slicey blade. 
a well done button lock, good micarta scales on top of a steel liner. So kind of similar to what your setup is with the PM2 here. But this one here, around $72, I have a discount code at White Mountain Knives that can save you 10%. So that really gets the price of that down and gets you something a little bit more affordable, a little bit more fidgety. I wouldn't say this plunge lock is as strong as the compression lock because the plunge lock just locks down the knife against the stop pin. Whereas the compression lock, actually, if you look at the way that it's built, it has this overbuilt stop pin that is compressing the lock down onto the, um, the tang of the blade. And on the PM2, it's also locking down inside of that lock there. So when it comes, this hits the stop pin right here. The compression lock goes under the stop pin and then it, it's sandwiched down into that part of the blade. So it's a little bit stronger or more secure of a lock mechanism than the plunge lock. But that's not to say that these plunge locks aren't good. I'm just saying one versus the other, there's more strength to be had on that Spyderco compression lock. There's a little bit more engineering going into that. Overall, PM2s are always very recommendable. They are gonna have a thinner geometry. I forgot to show that, let me bring. They're gonna have a thinner geometry than what you're gonna see on the Shaman. So it's gonna be a more slicey knife. It's not gonna have as tall of a flat grind, but these both are really thin behind the edge for such a large knife. Um, this is a great iteration too, really comfortable in hand. I've never been a big fan of these pocket clips because to me, they just kind of put the whole pocket clip in the way. Uh, that's why I like the MXG gear or the Lynch clips because it moves everything to the back of the knife. Um, just helps improve the ergonomics, you know, a little bit. This is an awesome, awesome version. I think I like this so much more than the inset liner version and the micarta the smooth micarta I forgot to talk about that too that smooth micarta is really nice it's not quite as smooth as what you'll see here on the giant mouse ace grand this one here is completely smooth this one here you have just a little hint a little hint of micro milling on there that is really well done so you do get a little bit of traction on those Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, leave a like if you're enjoying the content, as I mentioned earlier, especially if you're interested on the disassembly and seeing everything that I do with this knife to help the user to make sure that they have a friendly experience, make sure you're subscribed. Thanks to everyone out there that is already subscribed, regularly leaving likes and comments. I appreciate your support of the channel. Thank you guys. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic week and until next time, peace.